Hello from London, Houston and the Caledonian Sleeper. I'm Patrick Hughes and this is Planet Patrick. This is one of my favorite views of the St. Pancras Hotel, now owned by Renaissance. So I've arrived at London Houston Station, and this is where the Caledonian sleeper goes from. So let's go up and uh, see what there is to do for an hour before we can check into the room. Thank you. The Caledonian sleeper is not listed yet on the departures board. And actually, although it's still relatively busy for 9.30 at night. Very little is open. I'm not sure whether that's to do with COVID or the fact that it's a Monday night. This is a security message. So it's about 10.34 and the platform number has just gone up for the Caledonian sleeper. So let's go and see if we can get on board. I think it might be here. Let's have a look. Hello. Hiya. How are you? To Glasgow. Uh, we'll All oh, right. Yeah, I think I'm in. I think I'm in K. So there seems to be staff um, at various strategic locations to check people in. Um, they're clearly prepared for people to arrive early, so that's good. I think. So which side would you like me to come? I'm in K. Okay. Stephen is looking after that. All right. No worries. Thank you. Hiya, you're popular today. People, people are sending me towards you. Um, I'm in K. Coach K, Glasgow Central. It looks very fancy. Look at the logo. It's a wee bit tight. So I think this is me here, number seven. Let's have a look. Wow, it looks great. Okay, let's get the bags put away. You're being parked momentarily in the sink. Let me double check that I have the right room. Okay. First of all, I'm gonna put my bags away. Let me show you what the luggage space is like. I think that looks pretty spacious, so let's get everything tucked away there. Ah. Do not obstruct this area. Lesson number one. I think this room looks like it's set up for two guests, to be honest, which means that there's two gift packs. I'll tell you what's confusing me slightly. My ticket says Coach K, which this is, Berth 7L. And I'm in room seven, but what does the L stand for? It must stand for lower, right? Anyway, let's get filming. I want to show you the whole room. Let's have a proper look at the room before I decide to go off to sleep, which won't be for a while yet. It's 10 to 11, we've about an hour until this train sails off into the sunset. There is a blind. Looking out onto the platform. Hello, people on platform. Goodbye, people on platform. There is a sink with a perfectly reasonable um, water pressure. I don't want to lose that. Down here there is one towel, two towels. This appears to be set up for two people and a small trash can with a little bag in it. There is on the bed, if you can see it, 
a little gift bag. So let's bring that up top, have a look. In the gift bag, there is a water, handy. Thank you, people of Strathmore. Oh, enjoy the most civilized way to travel between London and Scotland. Sleep peacefully as the moonlit world slides by and wake up refreshed, relaxed, and ready to go. I'm going to do my best with that. Okay, let's have a quick look at what's in the bag. As somebody used to say, what's in the bag, Dad? It's all nicely sealed, so we have to give that COVID kudos. Ooh. Inside there is, oh look, that's cute. Little eye mask. Smells nice. Some little um, earplugs. Oh, I can hear somebody next door. Oh, and some soap. Is that it? <laughs> Is that it? I was hoping for snacks. All right, well, we have soap, so that's the thing. Let's see what else there is to see. Let's look first at the top bunk. Two pillows are provided. And up here, there is an individual light, a room light, which kills everything, and a USB charger. And that's gonna come in handy for me. I think that's a great idea. It's a little dark to see down here, but we have two sockets, two USB chargers, a button to call the host, and a window light. And this is what the window light looks like when it's on. Much is said about the mattress. And I have to say, it's quite impressive. The linen seems very good quality and the quilt looks really good. There is an accommodation guide. Lots of information in there. There is apparently a lever at the base of the tab here, which adjusts the temperature of the water. That's good to know because I wouldn't have worked that out on my own. Here underneath the sink, there's a table which pulls out like so, and then flips forward. Over here's the main control panel, which is operated by the person who uses the bottom bunk uh, in case there are two people. Again, the light can be put off here and the room temperature is controlled here. There is of course safety information to be read. I have to say I'm pretty impressed. This version of the Caledonian sleeper came into operation in 2019. So this is known as the new layout. And I guess because it, um, it ran more sparingly over COVID, it still is a relatively new product. Um, I particularly like the walls, which are done in tweed. It has a very luxurious feel. This is all things to all humans. I'm not sure that dryer is working. There are sanitary bags, toilet rolls, a bin, and of course, a loo. From what I've seen so far, the Caledonian sleeper is a classy, comfortable kind of train. And that is the civilized way. Even if I'm using kind of marketing language to travel seven or eight hours. Yes, you can do this in one hour uh, by plane. But this truly is enjoying the journey. I can't quite get to see the front of the locomotive but you can certainly hear it. <laughs> the train is made up of cars going to Edinburgh Waverley, as well as Glasgow Central. And what happens is that whenever the train gets to car stairs, the train is split. The front part is Glasgow, and the rear part then uh, connects on to go to Edinburgh Waverley. 
That happens, I think, about 10 to 7 in the morning, so we'll probably all be awake. Our host, Stephen, also pointed out to me that although uh, COVID means that service is restricted, a cup of tea is provided early in the morning, at about quarter to seven. So I have to make sure I'm up before that. <laughs> this is the outside of my room. This tells you something about the configuration of each car. These uh, two windows, which are close together, are classic solo or twin rooms. So those have a sink, but they don't have a toilet and shower ensuite. The more separated windows, if you like, Pardon this train that's going behind me. The more separated windows are club rooms. So those have uh, ensuite facilities and therefore are bigger. But apart from the provision of ensuite facilities, the bedrooms are completely the same. Same bedding, same pillows, same decoration, I understand. Let's go back in. It's still about 40 minutes until we depart, so I think it's time to do a little bit of editing, maybe a little bit of reading, and start thinking about getting ready for bed. See you in a bit. A word about fit. I'm a 183 centimeters or six feet tall, um, and I fit not entirely stretched out yet, but I fit pretty well into this. However, the width of the bed, I think it's 63 centimeters. It's going to be relatively tight, particularly because there's this big cushioned bit. Might be sled slightly better up top. Also, I have removed the ladder, which had been here, because I didn't want to keep bumping into it at night. Also, I've taken all four pillows, two that were up top and two down below, and that's just about making it super comfortable for me. I'm just checking the time. We're due to leave in the next two to three minutes. And I have to tell you, once we get going, it won't be long until um, I'm getting tucked up underneath this little quilt cover. Snoozy. Oh, that might be it. I'm going to switch off the light to see if we can watch the d departure a little bit better. You can hear a little bit of the people next door eating crisps. I think it's time to get all tucked in. Time to turn off the light. See you in Glasgow in the morning. The train just decoupled at car stairs with the Edinburgh portion continuing to Edinburgh Waverley uh, and this portion continuing towards Motherwell and Glasgow Central in just about an hour. So breakfast has arrived, which is a cup of tea and a little porridge bar and some milk. Keep us going until we get to a cafe for something glamorous to eat. I have to say, I slept just fine. I did wake a little when we stopped and um, things were particularly noisy. And I was conscious as we were um, getting closer to Motherwell that um, tea would be coming at a quarter to seven, which is most welcome. Only about 20 minutes, I think, until we reached Glasgow Central.
Last night I went looking for the showers and couldn't find them, so I thought I'd start over this morning. But I couldn't find them, not even at the ends of the carriage where they were supposed to be. I thought that there were showers on board for people using the classic rooms like I was in and you paid five pounds extra. It appears to say that on the sleeper.scot website. Um, but Stephen cleared that up and said, no, there aren't showers available to purchase uh, on board. You can use the station facilities here in Glasgow Central or in, um, in London, Euston, before you leave. So here we are at Glasgow Central after roughly a seven and a half hour journey on the Caledonian Sleeper. Is it worth it? There's a little bit coming up on price just after this. The cost for solo occupancy of a classic room on the Sleeper was £125, including all taxes. But I think it's worth it to arrive relatively refreshed, having had a bit of a sleep. Slower travel is maybe a new way to think about things, especially for an AV geek like me. So um, it's definitely worth considering, particularly if you get a great deal like I did. Thanks for being here on Planet Patrick and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.